In today's Audacity tutorial, we'll look at two key features in Audacity, which is normalize and loudness normalization. And what exactly does this mean? And what is the difference between these two? So let's get started. Hello and welcome to TPU TV. This is Dilip. If you don't know me, I'm a blogger, podcaster and affiliate marketer. And I create a lot of practical, simple and implementable videos, podcasting related tips in this channel. So if you're new here, then you might want to subscribe to this channel in order to stay updated with all of the latest videos that I release. And if you're new to podcasting, then you might want to join my free course on how to start a podcast in 10 days. You'll be able to find the link in the description box below. Go ahead, hit the link and join the free course and get started with your own podcast in less than 10 days. Now on to today's video. Two key features in the effect section in Audacity are normalize and loudness normalization. And there is a lot of confusion. Usually there is a lot of confusion between these two as to which is the one that you should use on your audio. Now, do you really need to use both of these on your audio? Not necessarily. But are these good to use features? Yeah, absolutely. They are good to use features. So I'll quickly run through what these two features mean. So I'll quickly tell you. So I'll quickly share what these two features mean. And then I'll go to my desktop and show you how to use these two effects and use the settings on these effects. So first of all, normalize. Normalize. What does normalize do? It basically normalizes. So that's exactly what it means. Now, what do you mean when you say it normalizes? An audio file usually has a lot of crests and a lot of troughs. The crests are the ones that go up and troughs are the ones that come down. Now, in a lot of audio, what you will find is that the crests or the peak volume of the audio usually varies from the most loud part to the most silent or the most subtle part in the audio. Now, when you're listening to that audio, it might sound a little awkward for you, especially if you have different clips with one clip having a completely different level that is maybe high and another clip on a different level, which is maybe low. Now, if you are combining all of these clips and you want to release your audio, then if you listen to this finished audio, you will realize that while the initial piece of the audio was a little loud, the next piece of audio is a little low in terms of the volume and there is uh, uh, an uncomfortable feeling when you're listening to it. You might want to get rid of that uncomfortable feeling and that is what normalize does. Basically what normalize does is it normalizes all of the audio levels on all of these clips. So after normalizing, when you listen to that audio, you won't find that distortion or maybe that ups and the downs in terms of the loudness or the audio levels and it will be comfortable on your ears. So that is basically why you use normalize. So should you use normalize in your audio? If there are multiple speakers speaking or if you're joining multiple clips, audio clips, then you might absolutely want to use the normalize feature. And in a little while, I'll show you what are the settings on normalize, but that is basically what normalize is. So where do you use normalize, especially if you're using multiple clips? And second, if you feel that your audio is a little too low and you are not able to clearly hear the audio, then in that situation, you can use normalize again. So those are the two use cases for normalize. Now, what exactly does loudness normalization do? So basically for audio, there is a standard, a standard of a standard for the loudness. So in order for everybody to be able to comfortably hear an audio, this standard has been set and this standard is also called as perceived loudness. So basically what loudness normalization does is it levels your audio based on this perceived loudness or the value that has been assigned to it as a standard. So I'll once again show you how to use loudness normalization and what is that standard, that number that I'm talking about. So you might want to watch the entire video so that you're able to learn how to use loudness normalization the right way. So that is basically what loudness normalization is. And if you see, there is a lot of difference between these two, between normalize and loudness normalization, but use cases might differ do you want to use it or should you be using it will entirely depend upon how you recorded your audio. Now let's get on to my desktop and see how to use normalize and loudness normalization in audacity. Okay. So here I am on the audacity dashboard. Now 
let me quickly show you how normalize works and how loudness normalization works and what is the key difference between these two now first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply the normalize effect so first of all i'll have to select this audio so let me quickly select this audio now i go to effect volume and compression and you can see here there is both loudness normalization and normalize here so i'll go to normalize and you can see that there are some settings out here now remove dc offset basically means that if you see the audio is centered at 0.0, .0. now this is where you would want it to be you don't want it to be moving either to the top the positive side or to the negative side if you uncheck this this offset basically is removed which is something that you don't want to do so you want to keep this checked which is remove dc offset is checked and the second option here is normalize the peak amplitude to minus one decibel now this is a standard when you're normalizing this is basically the standard so you might want to keep it the way it is and not change it normalize stereo channels independently is something that you want to leave it unless you want to independently normalize the two channels that happens if you're recording two guests one on the left channel and the other one on the right channel you might want to use this if you are doing that but if you are not then i would recommend that you leave it the way it is leave it unchecked now once all of that is done all that you need to do is just click on apply and you will see that a normalization has been done let me quickly do a control z and show you now when i do this you'll see there is a slight change to the peaks here you can see that once again when i'm doing a control z and a control y you can see that there is a slight change to the peaks here that is basically what normalize does it normalizes your audio for the peaks now let me show you how the loudness normalization works so let me quickly select this audio go back to volume and compression and click on loudness normalization now in loudness normalization you will see the normalize option is set to perceived loudness and that is set to minus 19 LUFS. Now minus 19 LUFS is basically the standard for audio. If it is podcast audio, spoken word, whatever it is, the standard is minus 19. So you might want to set it to minus 19. Basically what it does is it evens out the loudness in your audio and it ensures that it is at that acceptable level or that perceived loudness is at minus 19 LUFS which is basically the acceptable standard for any audio now what this does is it makes listening easy on the ears so when your audience is listening to the audio it will be easy on their ears and it will be within that range where it is acceptable for their ear and you can see here normalized stereo channels independently is once again unchecked and treat mono as dual mono which is recommended you can just keep it checked and all that you need to do is just click on apply and you will see loudness normalization has been applied let me quickly do a control z and see how the change is now you can see here there is not much of a change if i do a control y there isn't much of a change so loudness normalization has been applied but you don't see a lot of change because this audio is already within that acceptable limit of minus 19 LUFS and that is basically why there is no change to it but there can be an audio where there is a need for loudness normalization to be applied and you will see this effect being applied in that kind of an audio so that is how loudness normalization and normalize work now the use cases for these two effects might be different you might want to use it in your podcast entirely your choice if you want to ensure that there is a smooth listening experience for your audience and if you see that your audio is slightly on the louder side or maybe on the softer side you can use these two features which is normalize and loudness normalization on your audio to ensure that you are giving a, a pleasing listening experience to your listeners i hope you enjoyed this video okay so that was a simple tutorial on how to normalize your audio and how to use loudness normalization for your audio i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if there is anything else that you want to learn about using audacity in podcasting then you can go ahead and comment that in the comment section below and i'll create a video for you and there are a few other tutorials that i've created about using audacity like for example automating audacity and putting together a complete workflow in audacity so you'll be able to see all of that in the playlists for audacity tutorial that i have put together 
I'll link to some of these videos here in the i button. Go ahead and watch those videos. And if you loved what you saw, then please do give this video a thumbs up so that others are also able to find this video and benefit from it. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, then you might want to subscribe to this channel today itself. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you stay updated with all of the latest videos that I release. That is all that I have for today's video. Don't forget to join my free course on how to start a podcast in 10 days. You'll be able to find the link in the description box below. Go ahead and sign up for the course. And if there is anything that you would like to learn more about in podcasting, just comment to them below and I will respond to all of your comments. That's all that I have for today's video. I'll be back again the next week with another interesting tutorial and discussion around podcasting. Until then, keep watching TPU TV. This is goodbye from the lip. You all have a wonderful rest of the week.